live wise i mean i remember seeing you at one of your first ever shows at uh at the at the early incarnation of what is now emc and yeah. um how have you developed your live show over the years and and, and what can we expect from um that from, would have been quite a while ago that was quite a while like ago quite an early like uh variation of my live show mm. It was, it was just you and it, yeah. I mean, you were essentially just DJing at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, how have your, how's your live show developed and, and what can we expect from your upcoming shows? Um, I mean, yeah, it's developed, like I kept it solo for quite a while and, but my setup, like what I was actually playing and what I was, the, the kind of, the kind of music I was playing changed and progressed. Um, I found... I found I, I felt a little limited when I was playing more somber music in live settings uh, because I was so used to connecting with people in an energetic way from my previous band, Pigeon, who you are aware of. Um, I think, yeah, I think I subconsciously I, I wanted to, I, I kind of missed some of those, some of that um, energy. And so I think uh, I've slowly been incorporating bigger tunes and like um, more dynamic moments throughout the live set and I'm playing a few different instruments. I've just introduced a keyboardist and a drummer to the band. I'll have a horn section for Slender and yeah, it's just expanding. I don't know how that happened, but here we are. Somehow the live set's almost coming back to kind of where you yeah, started exactly. with Pigeon. with it's so funny. <laughs> so weird. We, we, can't, we come full circle. Yeah. But the music certainly warrants that. I mean, there's so much that can be done in the live space to, to explore it. Yeah. And I, like, I don't know, it's the kind of shows I like. I really like uh, very dynamic shows that have this, this somber moments and then the, the big explosive moments. Um, yeah, so I'm just essentially trying to be truthful to the music in a live setting and um, give the audience a real sense of a journey throughout the set. And I mean, you mentioned um, uh, time in the UK, and and you've certainly been been uh, gallivanting around over the years here and there. Um, what are your plans overseas with this with this release as well? Um, I think we're going to start pretty cautiously. We want to, uh, like we kind of touched on this before, but we've it's it's been a minute between releases, and we want to sort of unleash the album and see how people react to it, what people think, and then and then approach touring and uh, sort of see what feels right. But I was cautious to book anything in without sort of knowing exactly what we wanted to do in each territory. So I think we're being a little bit more cautious this time around, but I'll definitely be, yeah, I'll be in the States and I'll be in, yeah, in Europe probably early next year maybe, I imagine. We're going to be talking to you about those shows, I'm sure, in the future. Um, is it um, you've got upcoming shows with uh, with Odessa? Yeah, yeah. So Odessa reached out for the support um, for the Australian New Zealand shows, and they're one of my favorite bands. So I was like, yes, yes, please. Where do I sign? Um, it was yeah, it was super cool because I actually I met them once when they came out for Listen Out, and I was a bit drunk and I thought I made a tit of myself, but. <laughs> Apparently not. The office still <laughs> came through, so here we are. <laughs> you, did, you did something right. Tit, tit or not. <laughs> um, well, congratulations on the record. It's uh, it's such a great listen, and I really hope everyone sinks their teeth into it when it comes out July 14th. July 14th. And 